Well, hello again and welcome to another episode of the Hyperion Adventures Podcast. I'm Tom. As always, I'm with my gorgeous, wonderful, intelligent, hardworking, Easter egg loving <laughs> wife and co-host, Michelle. Thank you, honey. And happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter, everybody. And when I say that she loves Easter eggs, um, I think that's both the, it's the, both the food right. and... The little things we find in movies that we're going to be talking about today. Exactly. Both are very fun. Both are very fun. Yes. Happy Easter to all of those of you who celebrate. For those who celebrate as well, happy Passover. Right. Um, we hope you had a, an enjoyable celebration over the weekend. I know many of you will probably listen to this after Easter mm-hmm. and Passover have long since passed. But we still wanted to wish that for you anyway. And that's why we're also still celebrating with our episode topic for today exactly just hope you're all having fun and enjoying family or friends or however you're you're spending the weekend yes exactly exactly and we appreciate that you joined us today whenever that day may be in the future (laughs) you can find us most everywhere you get podcasts of the very best place to find us is on our own website hyperionadventurespodcast.com and while you're there we would love for you to sign up for our newsletter if you haven't done so already Please sign up for the newsletter. Just know the way to be involved in the Hyperion Adventures podcast world. By the way, we are recording this episode. If you didn't notice already by the mentioning of Easter <laughs> on Sunday, April 17th, 2022. Yes, Easter Day. So uh, also another way to be involved in this show is to follow us on social media. We're on Twitter at Hyperion Podcast, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. If you are on Facebook, come on over and join us for some good positive Disney energy fun at our Hyperion Adventures Facebook group. It's so great to make new friends and it's a wonderful group and you will love it. And we all uh, enjoy posting and celebrating everybody's fun. Yeah. And if you want to find it, just do a search for the Hyperion Adventurers Facebook group. Just like I said right there, come on in. We don't ask a lot for you to join. Just sign right up. And we hope that you, you can either sit there and just watch whatever goes on or you can be involved. We'd like both aspects of it, whatever you are most comfortable with. Right. Yeah. So uh, also we do have a YouTube page, uh, page, but YouTube page, a YouTube channel and a YouTube page. If you'd like to find us there, uh, if you just do a quick search for Hyperion Adventures podcast, hit subscribe and you'll know whenever we have a video. And if you ever want to contact us for any reason, please hit us up at our Gmail account, Hyperion Adventures podcast at gmail.com. Yes, we love hearing from you for whatever reason. If you just want to reach out to us or have any questions or comments about episodes, we love to hear from you. Yes, absolutely. We just want to connect with you in any way possible, whether it be through social media, whether it be through the Gmail account, uh, Facebook group, whatever it may be. We just enjoy reaching out and being reached out to, uh, to know that, you know, hey, we're all out here having a good time, a good Disney positive time. Exactly. So I feel like we sound like newbies on this episode. <laughs> you sound fine. <laughs> Apparently Easter's gotten to me. Maybe a couple too many of those Reese's peanut butter eggs or something have gotten to me this morning. Maybe I shouldn't have those for breakfast anymore. Right? Yeah. What? Maybe at least if I should cut it back to a five or something. I don't know. <laughs> Just kidding. You're doing fine. Yes. You're doing funny. great. Whew, take yeah. two. <laughs> <laughs> and if you'd like to support this show, which at this point, why wouldn't you? <laughs> Obviously, we need as much support as possible. Uh, there are a couple great ways to do that and get some cool swag out of the deal mm-hmm. as well. Uh, the first one is through our Spreadshirt shop. Uh, if you want to find us there, just go to Spreadshirt.com. Do a search for Hyperion Adventures podcast and all our great merchandise will come up there. You can also go to our Linktree account, which is attached to all our social media channels, and you can find an easy link there as well. And we have all sorts of great stuff there for you, including stickers, masks, hats, of course, t-shirts, mugs, water bottles, all sorts of things with all our different logos. And we get a portion of everything you purchase from that shop. Plus you get to, you know, sport the, the stuff that you enjoy listening to. Boy, I am bad today. You <laughs> get to bad. <laughs> <laughs> Choppy. <laughs> <laughs> Just being very polite. <laughs> 
you can support us by showing off some of this merch as you go through the you know the grocery store, out to the parks, or even just in your own living room. That's right. And we appreciate those of you who have supported us already. It really does help, you know, um, cover some of the costs that are associated with putting on a podcast. Yeah, and there are costs that, uh, you know, that take us every single week. Uh, and so we appreciate anybody who wants to help us out with this show. Another great way is to be a part of our Patreon group. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to find us there, just go to patreon.com slash Hyperion Adventures podcast. And we have tiers there starting as low as $2 per month where you get some swag and some other things that are going to be coming your way very, very soon. And uh, we appreciate everybody who's already signed up and become a patron of the show. We sure do. You're very special people and we truly, truly appreciate it. And yes, you're right. There is going to be something that uh, we'll be talking about in this episode that uh, will be provided for our Patreons just Ooh, to say thank you. Something a little secret uh-huh. just for the Patreon members. Mm, interesting. Yes. interesting. Can't wait to see that one. That is coming up in this week's show. But before we get to this week's show, you know, we always like to look back at the week that was because, you know, sometimes it can be a little tough. Weeks can seem a little difficult. Work can be a struggle. Home life can be a struggle. Gosh knows if you watch the news, that can be a struggle. <laughs> right? uh, but we always find that there are these beautiful little gems of wonderfulness. That's a word, right? Yes. In every single week that we like to point out. So we like to do our favorite thing from the week that was. And when we do this, we always start with Michelle. One, because she's not screwing up the episode already <laughs> like I am. I'm not screwing it up, buddy, <laughs> but that's funny. <laughs> But that's because she's great at everything she does. She does the best research. She has the best lip lips. She has the best <laughs> lips and the best list. <laughs> Take three. <laughs> and you wonder how much editing we do on this show. Right? You're hearing it right now. Not a lot. <laughs> And of course, she has the best favorite thing from the week that was. So, Michelle, what is your favorite thing from this week? Um, Well, I guess what I would say my favorite thing is actually was a string of things that happened this week. My staff uh, decided to uh, participate or create a spirit week this week um, that had themes every day where we were able to, you know, sport some fun themes that really made the, you know, the day just a little bit more fun, more joyous. And it culminated with uh, Easter egg hunt at the clinic. So that was, you know, it was kind of fun all week. And it was great to see that the, we have a fun committee and that they put together such a great event. Yeah, I know you were all decked out in all various different things mm-hmm. uh, every day as you were heading off to work. And that was a lot of fun. Yes. Of course, you look fantastic as always. Well, and thank you. I know you shared some pictures with me that uh, some things that were going on there that looked like there were a lot of fun yeah, as well. So yeah. very cool. So, yeah, very cool. definitely. That's a good thing. What about you, sweetie? My favorite thing from this week. Well, there were a couple emails that I can't talk about yet, which were really my favorite things from this week, but it's coming. <laughs> it's coming very, very soon. soon. We'll be able to talk about that very, very soon. But my other favorite thing from this week was being able to secure a uh, spot for the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic mm-hmm. Rewind Annual Pass Holders Preview coming up here at the Walt Disney World Resort. We were able to secure a weekend. We're hoping we're going to be able to be there yeah. for this weekend. We're not quite sure yet, but at least we've secured a spot. As long as we can work out the details, we will be able to check out that brand new exciting attraction. Yeah, looking forward to that. We also got uh, secured Disneyland reservations to hopefully catch the new and improved uh, Main Street Electrical Parade. Right, right. Maybe month. World of Color, too. And that, yes. that's coming back as well. There's lots of stuff that's uh, coming back. Disneyland Forever Fireworks right. is returning again. Same time. It's going to be a very exciting next few weeks for the Disneyland Resort as yes. well. Another thing I want to mention that we watched last night. I know it's been out on Disney Plus for a few weeks, but um, we just randomly looking for something to watch last night we heard a couple people say some good things about it so we checked it out and that was better nate than ever yeah a movie basically about a kid trying striving to go to broadway and it has a lot of uh, broadway actors and actresses and dancers and singers right. and stuff that are involved with it and it was really really fun yeah i really enjoyed it loved the story um it was very touching and you're right it was it was almost my favorite thing of the week it kind of was a you know consideration there um but yeah it was, it's a great film if you haven't seen it take the time it's really good yeah if you like broadway 
right. know, if you like musicals, if you like Broadway shows, it's quaint, it's cute. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not going to say it's like this award-winning movie right, or anything, no. but it was kind of fun. Yeah, you know? it's left just me a, with some real good feelings yeah, at the end. Yeah, so I, we enjoyed it, and we hope you either have enjoyed it or you will check it out and give it a chance yourself. So on to this week's show. We have lots of stuff for you this week, including... Well, you'll need to be quick on the draw if you want to secure a prime spot when World of Color, which we were just talking Mm -hmm. about, returns to Disney California Adventure Park. We'll tell you why that is. And a guest favorite thrill ride reopens at the Walt Disney World Resort. We'll tell you all about that as well. But enough about that. Let's go ahead and move straight forward onto our main topic of the week. So yes, as we've alluded to all through the my stumbling through the first portion of the show, uh, it is Easter and we decided that this would be a good time to look at Easter eggs. And no, we're not talking about the colorful, hard-boiled <laughs> eggs that everybody loves a fun decorating and hiding and finding most of and then finding one another a year or two later yeah. somewhere. No, we're actually talking about the little hidden gems that you find in various Disney shows, Disney Mm -hmm. movies, you know, the animators and the people that create these shows, these movies, love to hide little things for people to find. And so we thought we'd go through some of our favorites that we've discovered uh, throughout the years. Some of them are more new. Some of them are probably a little bit older. Some are probably ones you already know about, but hopefully there will be a couple here that you didn't know and that we can find for you. And maybe you'll search for the next time you watch one of these films or series. Right. And, you know, I know that there's so many, I mean, we could be talking for hours about different Easter eggs. Um, I don't know how you approach it. I tried to find um, or talk about ones that are maybe less known. Yeah. Some of them, I just kind of went with favorite ones that are, you know, some are pretty obvious and and you will probably know about them already. And there, you know, maybe a couple more, there might be a little bit more obscure, but just kind of as things that I've discovered, just kind of, you know, my, some of my favorites without going throw everything because I love Easter eggs. I could sit here all day and talk about little Easter eggs and various shows and everything. I mean, if you go through the Mandalorian and if you go through the book of Boba Fett, we could sit here all day and just drop Easter eggs from Star Wars, you universe just on those right. you know we'll probably get a few of those in here but we could do that as well so there's we just do a so whole much episode there. on candace against the universe well there's that too <laughs> which michelle would love to do i know me. that'd Trust be me. a fun episode she would love to do that <laughs> We actually do well for our downloads. Our Phineas and Ferb episode has done pretty well. So, nice. Uh, that one might be, maybe we'll, we'll approach that at some point. But let's go ahead and go through this. And then we'll just kind of do a back and forth here, I think, unless you have a different plan in no, mind. No, I'm, I'm good with whatever and way. We may have some duplications here. So we'll yeah. just kind of go through and, and you know discuss some of our favorites. And uh, maybe like Michelle said, some of the more obscure ones. So, uh, Michelle, what did you have for your Ooh. favorite Easter eggs as we go through our Hyperion Adventures Easter egg hunt here. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, okay, well, I don't know if necessarily my favorite. I think it's one of the cutest. Um, and that's in Wally when uh, when he recreates like a, a statue or a sculpture of Eva. One of the arms is the Luxo Jr. lamp. Mm. And I thought that was pretty cool and cute that they tied that in. You know, they always in... Pixar, you know, there's some things that are pretty common in in every episode and that's talked or every film and that's talked about. And the Luxo lamp is certainly one of them, but it's so creative how they put it into that scene. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I like that one. Thank that's a good you. That's a good one. Thank you. What about you? So I'm going to go ahead and start. We already talked about The Mandalorian, mm-hmm. Book of Boba Fett, and I'm going to go right to those two series to start off my first one. And uh, this this made an appearance in both the book of boba fett and in the mandalorian Mm. and that is r5d4 who if you know very well he is the droid that had the bad motivator (laughs) in uh, the original star wars uh, a new hope um that actually you know ends up with r2d2 taking his place and creepio you know tells him to take that one and that's the one who ends up going with luke and the in the lars and um and, and but he shows up often well, often, uh, through a few episodes mm-hmm. um, within the, both The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett with Pelimato. He's part of Pelimato's droid yeah. crew there. And you can even see, if you look at the back of him, where it's like 
like there's some scorch, right? Uh, you know, where he's you can see where it's burned a little bit and it's been repaired or whatever, where that motivator that was bad got repaired, so, right? Yeah, that, that's awesome. You probably have picked that one out already, but if not, uh, look for him because that is the R5 unit that was from uh, that original film. That's a great one, yeah. that is awesome. So, what do you got next? Okay, I have actually the, the next one I have listed is um, kind of like a multiple kind of like what you're saying something that reoccurred in multiple films and um that's with it's it's in pixar films and there's a, like a pagoda design on a like a takeout container box that shows up in multiple films and it shows up in in a bug's life where manny the mantis has his uh, chinese cabinet of metamorphosis um, then it's we're also see it in Toy Story 2 inside the Pizza Planet truck, oh, yeah, sure. you know, um, Ratatouille. It's among uh, the things that are in Alfredo's uh, apartment in his refrigerator. Incredible 2. They had takeout boxes that they're eating. It shows up there uh, inside out. The family also has uh, Chinese takeout there and inside uh, Toy Story 4 the refrigerator of the antique shop owner. Mm. So I thought it was cool that um, they they had that recurrent theme throughout multiple ones. And and I think it may have shown up on some others, but those are the, the ones that I found that were, yeah. you know, really cute and, you know, that I could find. <laughs> That's especially interesting because, you know, there's some that are really well known. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go over one here mm -hmm. in a moment uh, that are really well known that you look for in every single Pixar movie because they exist right. in virtually every Pixar movie. But that's one that I didn't know about. Right. So, yeah, definitely yeah. We'll keep an eye out for that one for sure. So, cool, really cool. good. Michelle Thank you. always has <laughs> the best of everything. So, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if she has the best Easter eggs for sure. <laughs> no. yeah. All right. What do you have up next? Well, back to Star Wars. And I'm going to go back <laughs> to the Book of Boba Fett for this one because I think this one is really fascinating. And I believe it's in episode two of the Book of Boba Fett. And there's a scene where Boba visits a small cantina uh, and that the cantina is actually the infamous Toshi Station, you know, go to oh, Toshi Station to pick up some right. power converters. <laughs> and that is actually Toshi Station that he goes into, you know, and we we've always assumed that it was kind of a Toshi Station. Maybe it was some sort of, you know, uh, workshop right. or, or something along those lines. No, Toshi Station is actually a cantina. <laughs> so Luke was apparently, like, yeah, I'm going to go get, pick up some power converters, which power converters may be some sort of cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, maybe he was going there like to buy one from somebody a else. cocktail yes no. i agree <laughs> like so, there was somebody who was about to sell power converters yeah. and he had got that scoop and he wanted to meet him over there <laughs> yeah. uh, another part of this is when he goes there you also see a couple characters named cammy and fixer there these are a couple of Luke's friends that he was planning on going to see that he visits Atashi Station very often. Uh, it's interesting because if you don't know, they are actually part of a deleted scene from the original Star Wars where he does go visit this spot, talks with, they are there, Cammy and Fixer and uh, Biggs. Big's Darklighter, who you do actually end up right. seeing later on. Mm -hmm. Star Wars, you know, they, they talk about him. They they briefly talk about him um, early on in the film, but right. you actually meet him later on. Well, originally you were supposed to meet him early in the film. Uh, so uh, it's interesting that Cammy and Fixer do yeah. make a quick appearance there uh, within Tashi Station. Wow, very cool. Yeah. So, very cool. So that's my next one. Back to you for more great Easter eggs from <laughs> Michelle. What do you got? Well, I'm sticking with Pixar still. I, I see you're in a Star Wars theme. I'm kind of on the I, Pixar I'm done with my theme. Star Wars, oh, I think. okay. Um, so this one I thought was actually really funny to me. Um, in Coco, when Miguel is um, walking around, there is a, a poster of the Incredibles family, like the from the Incredibles movie, but they're in their like skeleton form. Mm. And I'm showing you a oh, picture yeah. there. So yeah. um, I did verify that. It's actually... And four, that's in the Land of the Dead, right? Yes. Mm. It's actually in, in 47 and a half-ish minutes into the film that, that you can see that there. It's a poster on the wall. Um, if you see the scene where there's like... Um, you know, sparklers and everything going off. It's in that scene. Yeah. So. Very cool. That's yeah. interesting. I didn't know that one. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. Cool. Very cool. 
What do you have up next? Well, I'm going to stay with Pixar too, but I'm going to go with one that's more traditional. And this is one that I haven't, I, I actually, we've watched this movie several times and I hadn't spotted it up until just recently when I was doing research on this. Mm-hmm. And that is the Pizza Planet truck. Um, and within, right. it, it exists within Luca. It does like it does in virtually every Pixar movie that there is out there. But I wouldn't, I wasn't able to spot it until finally now. So if you're looking for the Pizza Planet truck, and if you, again, these are spoilers for these. You can find it yourself. <laughs> right. So, you know, take it for what you want. But it is in Luca, only it is not a truck. It is a three wheeled Pizza Planet scooter wagon. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that you can kind of see in Porta Rosa um, when they're doing the, the, the race in the rain and it just makes a quick appearance off to the side over there. Mm. So I uh, just keep an eye out for it. It is like I said, if you're looking for the truck, it's a little different. It's a three wheeled scooter now. Um, and, and of course we know the pizza planet truck is in almost all of the Pixar right. movies. It makes a, some sort of appearance. There's only one movie that it doesn't make an appearance. One Pixar movie that doesn't make an appearance. Michelle, do you know which one that is? I think I do. Is it um, Finding Nemo? No, it does make an appearance in Finding Nemo. Okay. I know I know it, but I can't think of it. It's The Incredibles. Just, I make it, uh, easy for okay. it seems like that would have been one of the easiest yes. ones to have it in. But for whatever reason, I ne- it didn't appear in the original Incredibles. It is in Incredibles 2, but it's not in The Incredibles. So that's the only movie that the Pixar Planet wow. truck does not make some sort of appearance in some sort of form. They, they're not always the same, right. uh, but they, uh, they it always exists somewhere within that world. Very cool. Yeah. I think a, a Pizza Planet Vespa would have been fun, too. It was a three-wheel <laughs> scooter wagon. It basically was a really big Vespa, essentially. So, uh, Back to you for the next great okay. Easter egg on our Hyperion Adventures Easter egg hunt. Cool. Um, so speaking of Incredibles, there was something, uh, you know, just a little funny concept that um, I saw somebody post about the... Um, Incredibles poster in the land of the dead is kind of like, are they foreshadowing <laughs> that they're dead, but all together? Um, or do they just like have their own entertainment and they kind of created what the Incredibles would look like if they were among the land of the dead? Mm, so cool. it's just kind of a interesting concept. Yeah, I love it. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So my next one again from Pixar in Ratatouille, um, I have actually two of them. If I can, can I do two together? Sure. All right. Um, so the first one is that uh, actually it's um, Bon Voyage is the mime. And we uh, saw actually Bon Voyage in Incredibles right. to begin uh-huh. with. So it's kind of cool how they have him cross over uh, in, in both of those. But the other thing that I thought was actually a, even a little cuter was that in Ratatouille, there's a scene and you don't see the dog. You only see the shadow uh, of a dog barking at Remy. And that is Doug from Up. Yeah. Uh, they were, Up was in production at the right. time, same time as Ratatouille was in production, getting ready to go out. And so that was our first introduction to Doug. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. You know, and it is kind of cute how um, Pixar does do the, uh, you know, planting of something for the next or upcoming films in their, in their films as they're doing it. It's kind of cool. There's a lot of, a a lot of examples of that. That was a good one. Yeah. The Doug one was one that I had as well. So that's a, that's a really good one. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we all love Doug. Doug, Who who doesn't love Doug? We do. He's the greatest dog (laughs) in the world. Outside of maybe Pluto. Right. It was really good. (laughs) I know. I know. I did read somebody had um, posted a thing that, uh, said well if he had his translator he might have said rat instead of squirrel <laughs> that's true that's a good point that's a good point so, yeah i mean at one point we, we need to go through and, and do an episode on our favorite disney dogs because there are some yes. many great disney dogs out there right right i know actually and and oh, i guess i'm kind of including it in this episode i wasn't planning on it but in the uh, film oliver and company there are a lot of Easter egg dogs that appear there. Um, you know, I think there's like Pongo and there's like three from Lady and the Tramp. And I'm trying to think there was another one, but obviously I'd taken that out of my list to begin with, but <laughs> I somehow got roped into talking about it. But. Yeah. You'll find a lot of these online if you, if you don't want to go back and watch the whole right, movie and right. try to pick them out and yes. everything. But yeah. yeah Although I did really on these because I was there was funny it was funny there was something I saw online and it wasn't accurate 
so I I felt like okay I gotta go and verify these things so very cool yeah very cool all right I think we're up to you all right well I'm gonna go ahead and go to Moana for my mm-hmm. next one and this is one of my favorite ones that I picked out right away when this uh, this film first debuted and that is uh, there is a scene in there and there's a few scenes where they drop tapestries and there are some Easter eggs mm-hmm. involved in these tapestries one is marshmallow from Frozen <laughs> is one of the like the, the creatures that they get right. you know, all the kids scared right when when um, Moana's grandmother is is telling the story right, about right. everything to begin with, um, so I which I love because you know hashtag real men love frozen of course, <laughs> uh, but there's another one later on that you see they kind of hang this tapestry or a blanket mm-hmm. kind of on a line, right? And you look at it and there's one that's kind of one person that's kind of tall and skinny man and another one that's kind of shorter and mm-hmm. uh, kind of stout. Well, those are caricatures of the uh, directors of the movie, the mm-hmm. co-directors of the movie who are John Musker and Ron Clements right. who have been doing Disney movies for a long time. Mm-hmm. They're, I, I believe they're Disney legends. If they're not, they're going to be very right. soon. I believe they're already Disney legends. But that's their little cameo in this film. And they make a lot of cameos in the films that they direct. Uh, they're in Aladdin. They're in Hercules. They're in Treasure Planet. Uh, and The Princess and a Frog, just to name a few. Wow. That you'll see them if you look closely. Look for, like, a, they're always together. Like I said, it's a kind of a skinnier, tall man. Right. And kind of a more short, stout man. Uh, and and just things like water gets splashed on them or something uh-huh, along those lines. They make appearances in a lot of their films. Uh, also from Moana, mm-hmm. I got one more for you. Uh, that is in, and this kind of goes back to um, the same thing with John Musker and Ron Clements. If you look closely in Tamatoa's treasure trove, you know, mm-hmm. in Shiny, yes. um, if you look closely, you will see the lamp from Aladdin right, in right, that yeah. group of treasure there. Again, uh, a little um, throwback, a little tossback, callback to uh, Aladdin there, another film that were John Musker and Ron Clements directed. Right, right, yeah. I love it when they have Easter eggs that are, you know, have more of a meaning of somebody involved mm-hmm. in it. I mean, obviously, it's fun seeing Easter eggs of any kind, but I, I especially like those that have a little bit more, like, meaning to them. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So um, that's always a lot of fun. And I think uh, there's been some other uh, Disney directors that have uh, done that kind of, or maybe the animators, I don't even know if they, they ask for it, but the animators like to play a tribute to the directors. Mm-hmm. And so they draw them into their, right. uh, the movies themselves. But they, they, yeah, and I know the directors from like the Hunchback of Notre Dame right. make an appearance there. Um, there are several spots where you can kind of track things down. So um, really cool stuff. So, but let's get back to the real Easter eggs here <laughs> as we do more of our Hyperion Adventurers <laughs> Easter egg hunt. <laughs> Michelle, what is your next Easter egg? Um, And I think I'm going to stick with where you mentioned Hunchback because because um, I have like just three little ones here of uh, examples, and I know there's many more of crossover appearances from films to film. And uh, Belle makes an appearance mm-hmm. in um, Hunchback when he's singing out there. She's walking along the streets of Paris. Just, um, uh, you just really see a little bit of her in the courtyard. Right. Yeah. yeah, reading a book. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, a common one I think a lot of people have, have pointed out in the past about Rapunzel being spotted among the guests going to the coronation at Frozen. Uh, you know, I knew that one. I Hashtag know, real bad love I know. Frozen. Yeah, I hope Eugene, I didn't take one that you were going to uh, use. Uh, Eugene's there too. They're both, right, they're, they're right. Both, That's They're true. both going to the coronation <laughs> together. It's really nice of them, you know, to, uh, you know, uh, kingdoms crossing over to represent one right, another and support right. one another. Yes. Um, and Riley from Inside Out actually is a visitor at Dory's Tank and Finding Dory. Ooh. So, you know, some cute examples of crossovers there. Right. Really cool. So, yeah, yeah good stuff. Uh, I'm going to go back to Pixar um, as well for myself here and go to the Cars franchise, which is peppered with Easter eggs. There are Easter eggs throughout it, but I'm going to talk about one of the most obvious ones that you may or may not have noticed right off the bat. And it's in plain sight, and that is Lightning McQueen's number 95. Mm -hmm. You know, it's there. It's on the side of them through virtually all of the films and everything. And you, you may have just thought, oh, that's a cool number. Totally right. makes sense. No, but what 95 is actually a reference to is the f- year that the first 
full length animated film Pixar created, which right. was Toy Story in 1995. Right. So they put 95 on Lightning McQueen to kind of do a little honor to that film. Yeah, I I had not realized that before preparing for this episode. And that's, again, it's great when they have something that's a little bit more symbolic um, for their Easter eggs. It just shows another level of creativity. For sure, for sure. So that's my next one. Do you have some more, Michelle? I do. I do. So uh, this next one is, it's in a Pixar film, but it's about a (laughs) non-Pixar, the Easter egg itself. And that's when uh, Flick is walking through the streets of Bug City, you know, and there's some billboards and everything. And one of them is a poster with the logo of the Lion King on Broadway. Mm. you know, on there, but it's, it's looking like the Lion King. It doesn't look like a bug. So um, I thought that was kind of interesting that they incorporated that into the film of Bugs Life. Really cool. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's lots of little stuff to see in that er- in little right. area as he's walking through. There. Yeah. There's a lot of symbolism in there yeah. too. Yeah. So cool stuff. All right, I guess you're up next. Okay, back to the Walt Disney Animation Studios for Hercules with this one. And this one, there's a scene in there that kind of tosses back to, calls back to another Disney classic movie. Mm -hmm. And there's a scene where Herc is getting his likeness painted on an urn and he's wearing a lion skin. And if you look Mm -hmm. really closely at that lion skin, that isn't just anybody's lion skin. (laughs) That lion skin is actually the pelt of Scar right. from the Lion King. Uh, you can somewhat see the scar in his eye as he's wearing it, as he uh, as he's uh, you know posing. Mm-hmm. But you see it more clearly when he gets frustrated and ends up throwing it on right. the floor. And uh, Phil is next to it, and you can clearly see the scar, right. you know, the trademark scar, scar around his <laughs> eye there from the Lion King, and that's uh, my one of my favorites. Yeah, that is uh, a great little one. Easter eggs. Yeah. yeah, you even see the color of his eyes yeah. and stuff like that. I know that's that is a cool one. Yeah, very cool. Do you have another addition to our Hyperion Adventures Easter egg hunt? Michelle? I do, I do. You know, and as I kind of started at the beginning of this episode, saying Phineas and Ferb, and I just couldn't go without mentioning Phineas and Ferb. And I know. And as, although I did mention that there's tons in the film of uh, Candace Against the Universe, uh, that's not what I'm going to talk about now. This one actually, and it may be a little bit of cheating because it's not a film. It was about one of their episodes. But um, it relates to the fact that uh, creator Dan Povenmeyer uh, had once worked on SpongeBob. And, and so in one of the episodes, it's called The Summer Belongs to You, um, Phineas and Ferb, they're actually trying to go around the world, uh, chasing like the summer solstice. Yeah, just have it uh, sunlight be day all day right, long. Right, yeah. right. And so they're going to different parts of the world. And every time they go, um, th- they're their whatever vehicle that's taking them crashes and they have to create another one and and things like that. Well, at one point they end up on a deserted Island and um, Phineas is frantic because, you know, one, they're trying to, he's worried about getting something to get back home, but he's also worried that his, the time is going away and they're not going to meet their, their goal. So he starts just like digging into the sand at the beach and he's looking for something and he pulls up a pink starfish and a sponge, which is so funny. And then he says, there's got to be something out there you can make of these, you know. And then, of course, he tosses them saying, that's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just kind of funny how they it, included that into, you know, one of the episodes. Yeah, that, that is one of the better episodes, by the way. Yes. Uh, Phineas and Ferb. Um, it's, a, it's a double episode, I believe. And yeah. It's a, it's a really long one, but it's a really good one. If it doesn't make you cry, you just have no heart. <laughs> I agree. I concur. I concur. <laughs> Thank you. So, speaking of things that if you don't have, cry at, you have mm-hmm. no heart. We're going to go back to hashtag Real Men Love Frozen. Ooh. But this one doesn't make you cry. This is just kind of funny. And I don't know if you if you haven't stuck through the credits, you may not pick this one out in the original Frozen. Uh, you may remember when Anna meets Kristoff early on, and they're in the sled, and mm-hmm. they're kind of talking about you know Anna 
you know, falling in love with a man, you know, on the first moment they've met, essentially the first right. day that they met and you know, are now, you know, engaged to be married. And Christoph is questioning this, of course. <laughs> and one of the things he brings up is that, you know, all men pick their nose and they <laughs> eat it. Ew. Yes. So if you stick around to the credits, you get this little disclaimer. It says, the views and opinions expressed by Kristoff in the film that all men eat their own boogers are solely his own and do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the Walt Disney Company or the filmmakers. Neither the Walt Disney Company nor the filmmakers make any representation of the accuracy of such views and opinions. So, <laughs> yeah, Kristoff is saying everybody does it, but Walt Disney Company and the filmmakers are saying, yeah, hold your horses there right. a little bit. But I just thought that that's a funny little Easter egg just kind of in the back end of the right, credits that you right. just got to you got to be looking for to find it. Exactly. I think there's other films that have really cute, um, you know, disclaimers or funny things, you know, where, you know, we're used to seeing that no animals were harmed. And, right. you know, in some films saying like no stuffed animals were harmed and, and different things like that. And I love that creativity, you know, and it's one of those things we do stay for the credits. We do feel that there's um, honor that needs to be um, recognized for the people who, put together the films and uh, but it's also very fun to see some of these little gems that they give to you for your trouble of staying till the end yeah um i think one of the ones that got to me the most is uh at the end of coco which i was already wrecked at the end of coco mm, yeah another movie like if you don't get wrecked at the end of coco who are you what's right, going what's right. going at least wrong the first with your time life? you see it <laughs> yeah or the 18th time you've seen it um but then you get through the credits and it kind of pays a tribute at the end to um, relatives of the mm -hmm. filmmakers that have passed away right. and they, they put up that they're kind of almost their own ofrenda yes. uh, there of post and that got to me too right, just right. within the credits I wasn't expecting it and it totally got to me again and here you know I'm already trying to dry all my tears right, and walk out yes. of the theater with you know, <laughs> a little bit of you know dignity um, <laughs> forget it it was all gone at that point I was just I was going to be coming out of there a mess there was just no way around it so I know yeah. that film was something because I um, and I think we've shared this story in the past but it, it it's funny how I remember going to see that film and hearing oh my god bring tissues this film is going to wreck you and you know the movie's going along and it's like yeah i like this film i don't understand why they're talking about crying there's nothing here that's really you know a few touching moments a few things that you know yeah tug at the heart but then yeah <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and the waterworks just couldn't stop. <laughs> yep, exactly. Exactly. So, um, really oh, cool, my really gosh. Cool. Uh, do you have any others or is that it for no, you? No, I do have others. Okay, let's go back to you for another <laughs> one. I got one more, but I want to go Ooh, back to you for another okay. one. Okay. Um, so anyways, um, one, as I mentioned, I like the ones with meanings or have like hidden messages. And uh, one such is in The Incredibles when uh, Helen Parr, as we know her, is Elastigirl. Um, she's radioing her mayday uh, from the plane and she refers to the plane as India Gulf Niner Niner, you know, and, and that's obviously lingo that um, pilots use to make sure people clearly understand that the letters and the numbers, they don't say five and nine because people could get that mixed up. So nine gets turned to mm -hmm. Niner. Um, but anyways, India Gulf Niner Niner, uh, Brad Bird, who is obviously very much uh, responsible for The Incredibles, also directed Iron Giant, IG, mm -hmm. Indigo Golf, and that came out in 1999. Wow, great. That's a great film. Not a non-Disney film, but that right. is a great animated film. Yes. If you have, I mean, I'm sure most of you have seen it, but if you haven't, find it. Iron Giant is another one. Another one that will wreck you, by the way. Um, that's a great film. Yeah, and even in uh, Ted Lasso, they uh, reference yeah. Iron Giant. <laughs> <laughs> That they play, that the coach played for the players. Yes, and yes. all the players are breaking down. He's yeah. like, uh, "Get ready, because you know you're going to be having to tend to them here, right. in a little, uh, you know, near this point of the film." Right? Yeah. Mean, yeah. So very funny. Anyways, all right. So you still have another one? I got one more mm. for you here, and it's from Wreck It Ralph, the original Wreck It Ralph uh, film, right. and. Uh, this is, I found really fascinating that if you look at the video game itself, when they show the video game, the front of the video game, mm -hmm. and you look at the top, you know, and it's like a video game, you know, it's got how many players you have left, it's right. got the screen, you know, and everything. And it has a high score listed there. And if you look at the high score, the high score listed there is 120,501. 
okay? Mm. Which seems innocuous enough, but if you actually break it down, 12, 05, 01 Aww. just happens to be Walt, Walt. Disney's birth date. Right. Ah, so that cool. was a clever little way to give a little nod to Walt right yes. there at the front of the game. Yeah, very cool. Very yeah. cool. Well, I have a similar one with WandaVision, actually. Oh, not, oh good. I love WandaVision. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So my next grouping here is of, um, you know, from, from Marvel films. And so in Marvel, okay, so this was another cheat. It wasn't a film. It was, you know, a streaming series. But um, I, uh, I did. Series are fine. I, I said series or movies. Oh, it's okay. Good, yeah. I didn't realize I mean, I did, that. I did Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett That's right at the true. beginning. Yeah. That's true. You cheated before I did. Yes. <laughs> um, no, but in uh, episode seven at the beginning, uh, it, you know, like where they do the, like the intro credits and are showing films and or uh, TV shows and stuff. Um, there's a bunch of things with Wanda's name on it. Like there's a name tag. Um, there's a street sign with her name, Wanda. Um, you know, somebody skywriting and writes the name Wanda. But there's also a license plate that says Wanda. And th but there's numbers engraved at the top. And those numbers are of Stan Lee's date of birth. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, cool. that was, you know, one of the uh, things a after he passed away that obviously he couldn't make cameos in. So. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? I do. So I have a few uh, more, and I, these I think more go into the that they they stand for something or they represent something versus like a crossover or whatever. Uh, in the very first Thor movie, there's a billboard uh, with the with the title "Journey into Mystery" into it, and um, that was actually the birth of Thor in the cartoons, uh, not cartoons, excuse the me, comics. the comics. Yeah. Um, so that's where it says, um, the description on marvel.com says, meek Dr. Donald Blake discovers a mystic cane in the caves of Norway and becomes the legendary hero of myth. Witness the earliest adventures of the mighty thunderer as he confronts his th sinister brother, Loki. <laughs> Sinister. Yes, sinister. But yeah, so that uh, journey into mysteries on the billboard really is talking about the birth of Thor in the first Thor movie. Wow, nice. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, another Thor reference in Thor Ragnarok, Valkyrie is known as Scrapper 142. And that comes from another comic, which is the 1962 Incredible Hulk comic number 142. Uh, it's not her first appearance. Valkyrie is actually is a returning, and it says that right at the cover of the, the comic, Va Val Valkyrie is back. But it is one where she is actually paired up with the Hulk. Mm. So I thought that was kind of a cute uh, nod to that. Very and cool. Yeah. And then... Um, my last ones here relate to Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, so there's a couple in there. The first one is uh, in Peter's classroom. The, you know, there's a series of pictures of like famous scientists, you know, Albert Einstein and the like. But one of them is actually Bruce Banner that's listed there. Um, and the other thing in that same film is um, Peter is standing near a church and the name of the church is the Korean Church of Asgar. <laughs> <Funny>. <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought that was kind of cool how they, they linked that in there. So um, those were my Easter eggs with the exception of one that is only going to be shared with our Patreon group. Um, for a, a big thank you to them. And this one is an Easter Easter egg that um, will actually unlock a free special reward for them. Ooh, so for so our Patreon members, thank look you. Out for look that. forward yeah. to this Easter egg that's actually going to reward you with something yeah. very special. And we'll 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 get it out to them first, but we'll tell you about it a little bit. No, later. we won't. It's so, only so. for the Patreons. Okay. You insist. Yeah, she's such a meanie. <laughs> she a meanie? <laughs> the Patreons are the best. They need to get special, the special things. They are the best. So I that's right. We Just for patrons. the Patreons. Especially Michelle, obviously. I pre appreciate the patrons <laughs> more than I do, but uh, does that surprise anybody? So. No. <laughs> You're funny saying that, though. But so. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so that was kind of a look at, obviously, w- there were so many Easter eggs. I'm sure we didn't name your favorite. Maybe we did, but there are so many Easter eggs out there to be found. We'd love to hear what your favorite Easter eggs are within right. Disney films or series. Um, please share them with us and we'll, we'll uh, bring them up on an upcoming show. Yeah. So hope you found this fun. Hope we shared some things that you might want to check back on some of the films or series and and see for yourself because it is kind of fun it is fun finding these things out and and then you know tracking them down right oh there it is there it is Uh, really good stuff right and if you have any questions for us of like where you know specifically to find some things we'll try to help you out with that too of course just email us just email us hit us up on social media all the channels all the ways we love hearing from you any way shape or form and that is our Hyperion Adventurers Easter egg hunt. Happy Easter once yes. again to everybody, whether you celebrate, whether you don't. We hope you at least had a good holiday, however, you decided to spend the weekend. Right. And hopefully, there's some family and friends involved with it. Right. Have some fun time. Right. So let's get to our Disney stories of the week. I actually don't have a lot for you this week, but I do have a couple that I want to get to really quickly. And that is, we'll start with, you'll be, uh, you'll need to be quick on the draw if you want to secure a prime spot when World of Color Mm -hmm. returns to the Disney California Adventure Park. We'll tell you what that's all about. This from the orangecountyregister.com. They say Disneyland visitors hoping to catch the return of World of Color, like us, yes. uh, will have to be well prepared, fleet fingered, and punctual at high noon each day <laughs> if they want to snag a viewing spot for the nighttime spectacular Disney California Adventure. Uh, they will use a virtual queue distribution. We all remember that from yes. the Ratatouille attraction, Rise of the Resistance, mm-hmm. Web Slingers, or whatever. Well, it's coming back for the World of Color when the nighttime spectacular returns returns on April 22nd. This is according to Disneyland officials. Uh, the World of Color uh, virtual queue will open daily at noon on the Disneyland app. Daily visitors and annual pass holders must be inside Disneyland or Disney California Adventure to access the virtual queue, which is at no additional cost. We're not talking about Genie Plus. We're not mm-hmm. talking about individual Lightning Lane purchases here. This will be for everybody who can get to that, if you have a reservation for Disney California Adventure Park or you have a park hopper uh, option and you are in Disneyland Park, you can take part in this virtual queue at noon. Nice. So is this just to see it or to have special viewing? This is for special viewing. Okay. This is to take place of, because you remember in the past when World of Color existed, well, Fast Passes also existed. Right. The paper Fast Passes, mm-hmm. you used to go to a kiosk and get a paper Fast right. Pass for the prime viewing spots for the World of Color. Well, Fast Passes don't exist anymore, so take that place. They're using the virtual queue to kind of fill in that void to right. get those spots where you can get access into those spots. Now, if you don't, if you're not successful getting one of these uh, passes through the virtual queue, the boarding groups, whatever you want to call them, doesn't mean you can't watch the World of Color. You just won't be able to get those prime spots. You'll have to kind of stake your spot out around the bay there uh, to kind of find where you can actually see the World of Color. Yeah, which is kind of, again, how they did it when you had the paper fast pass. Nothing really changes in that regard. It's it's going to be the same. They're just uh, having the way they do it a little differently, but we know how virtual queues work right um you know a lot of times for world of color you could go up and get the fast passes throughout the day and it you know they would sell out eventually or they would go be gone eventually but you had a little time you're gonna have to be quick because they'll probably go pretty quickly here when they they go up on the virtual queue at noon but we'll see we'll see how it goes i mean i guess it's you know there's some benefits to that too like when you used to go before and especially now where you have to have a park reservation or park hopper if you're not starting in Disney California Adventure Park um, because that was one of those things. They did go like by, you know, um, mid-morning, mm-hmm. you know, especially on the weekends. They they were gone. So you'd have to go to the park, that park first and pick them up even if you were planning to do other things that morning. That was what you had to do. So having it at noon kind of is a little bit more convenient actually. Right, right. So, so we'll you see how that goes. either park and you can do it at noon and... Yeah. Yeah. But don't be frustrated again. I mean, uh, obviously there'll be a little frustration if you can't land one in, in the virtual queue, but it doesn't mean that you can't watch the show. Right. It just means that you may have to get there a little earlier, stake out a good spot if you want a prime viewing spot exactly. outside of uh, what is, you know, a 
for those who get the boarding group or you know get it through the virtual queue, whatever they want to call it right. uh, there. So um, they, as far as we know, they're not using that for the Main Street Electrical Parade or Disneyland forever. Uh, they will also not be using Genie Plus service for prime viewing mm -hmm. spots for those. Um, there are some dining packages involved with that. We haven't heard yet on Fantasmic, which is opening right. in May. Um, that is a possibility they may use a virtual queue for that, but we haven't heard official word on, the yet, on that yet, so stay tuned. Now, uh, if you do want to see the world of color and you don't mind paying a little more, uh, there are ways to get prime spots for that as well uh, by you know taking advantage of some other things like the World of Color Dessert Party, which we've done in mm -hmm. the past, which is a lot of fun yes. as well. Um, that is $84 per guest, so it's not cheap. Right. But you get a sweet and savory selection of desserts and appetizers. You get beverages. And uh, you also get a seated spot in a prime viewing area there right. uh, for the World of Color. So yeah, if you're not one that wants to stand around a crowd, or you, know, you can kind of get that spot at a table and check it out that way and relax. And right. enjoy some food and drink as well. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Um, and if I recall correctly, we did that and we actually had some leftover food. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's not like a, a three course meal or whatever, but you know, you get like cheese and crackers and you get different desserts. And I think we did bring some of the desserts home. Yeah. Um, and you also get alcohol. So right. Yeah. I think you want. they didn't say in this, oh. in this, this thing, they didn't say in this, if alcohol was included or not from what I remember it was, right. but it wasn't official here. So, you know, you might want to check on that yeah. before you. I may be uh, misspoken. Go ahead. I believe, it out. <laughs> I believe it is, but I can't promise that. I don't want people coming back to us and said, you said alcohol is included right. and it's not. Right. I don't know for sure. I just remember what it was in the past. Right. And I believe it is for this, but always best to check with Disney to be sure if you're looking to get an alcoholic beverage is included in part of this package. Right. It's like, you know, two drinks uh, was what you would get with it, essentially, right, is what right. it was in the past. So also, um, there is also the World of Color dining package. And I know it's at Wine Country Trattoria. I went to Disney's website, and they said that they're also at Carthay Circle Restaurant. But um, that wasn't in the Disney Parks blog posting of this. Mm -hmm. So take it with a little grain of salt. Again, check back with Disney. But it was on Disney's website listed as that. And here's what they, they talk about for those. Um, you can do these at the Wine Country Trattoria. Carthay Circle Restaurant, maybe. Mm -hmm. And also at Storytellers Cafe at the Grand Californian um, wow. Resort as well. Um, I know that that is actually available for you. And what you'll get is a three-course meal. Um, this is at Tri Wine Country Trattoria in Carthay Circle. A uh, three-course meal uh, with a starter, an entree, and a dessert from a Pricks Fix menu, plus a non-alcoholic beverages. Alcohol is extra with that. Uh, for the Wine Country Trattoria, what they had the price listed at is... Uh, lunch and dinner, they start at $50 for adults, $25 for children. Mm -hmm. uh, if they are having it at Carthay Circle, um, like it said on this site, uh, lunch starts from $56 for adults, $25 for children, ages 3 to 9. Uh, dinner is $74 for adults, $25 for children, ages through 9. Um, and if you go to the Storyteller Cafe, uh, that is just for dinner, um, and it is a buffet meal mm, there. Okay. Um, dinner starts at $50 for adults, $25 for children. What you want to do for that is just go ahead and book a reservation for the Storytellers Cafe. And when you get there, tell them, I want to do the dining package. Ah. And they will give you a voucher at the end that will that will pay for, will allow you to get into the park. Now, you only want to do that if you can get into Disney California Adventure right. Park. You have a park reservation or you have a park hopper option to get there. And, and it'll give you a ticket to, you said to the park, but you meant to the show? To the show, sorry. Oh, if that's I, right. I yeah. just want to make sure yeah. people know they're it, not It gives a you essentially a, a voucher to get into their fast pass viewing area viewing area mm -hmm. um, for the dining package viewing area now all these prices uh, they don't include tax gratuity or alcoholic beverages it's like mm -hmm. I said I, I don't know about the uh, for sure about the dessert okay. package but as far as the dining packages none of those uh, are include those things you right. can buy alcohol at these spots mm -hmm. for an extra fee of course tax and gratuity, definitely a gratuity should be involved in this for the fine cast member servers there. Uh, also, there is a dining package for the Main Street Electrical Parade. Uh, it's a lunch package at the Plaza Inn restaurant that mm -hmm. you can go check out as well. Um, and that gives you a prime spot to watch the parade. Yeah, that one is, um, it's very limited. It's only for lunch uh, from one to three. So that one is a little bit more primo to try to find and get. Um, but the price is really good. So. Yeah, 
and you get some really good, some of that good fried chicken yeah, and stuff, some exactly. good uh, country fixings, get some good food. So right. that's it. One more quick story for you, and that is a guest favorite thrill ride just reopened back at the Walt Disney World Resort. This is just really quick. Expedition Everest <laughs> was announced this week that it's going to open. It opened yesterday on April 16th at Animal Kingdom Park. Uh, so that's great news. I know a lot of people were a little bummed. They were afraid that it was going to be closed for a long time. They weren't going to get a chance to go on it because it's a lot of people's favorite attraction right. at Animal Kingdom Park. Well, it's back open now. And now also it's included as part of Genie Plus. It's no longer the individual Lightning Lane purchase. So if you purchase Genie Plus mm. for Animal Kingdom for that day, you can make your Lightning Lane uh, reservations for Expedition Everest there. It's included in that nice. price. Yeah. Nice. So Very it's not good. the extra fee on top of that. So Good. In time for Earth Day celebration. There you go. And so it's good timing, especially since, you know, Earth Day is Animal Kingdom's birthday. Right. Yeah. You know, so, so that's great. So that's it for the Disney stories of the week. However, we never leave you without giving you some sort of tip that might help you on your next vacation. And when we do this, we always start with Michelle. One, because she's awesome, wonderful, all things great in the world. <laughs> she has the best lists. <laughs> She right. does the best research. She has the best Easter eggs. She doesn't screw up the beginning of the show. <laughs> and oh, she definitely <laughs> has the very best tip. So let's get to it. Here is Michelle's tip of the week. Oh, my gosh. Too funny. Um, I don't know if this is a tip or just an FYI in case you didn't know it. Um, but, you know, uh, vac- I think it's pretty well known. Vacation club members, when they're staying uh, overnight on uh, vacation in a vacation club resort or on point, um, through vacation club points that they've transferred to a resort, they get complimentary uh, overnight parking. Well, that benefit is included for everybody who is registered uh, on that reservation. So say, for example, you're going to be at a resort at one of the vacation club resorts and you're getting a two or three bedroom and you have five or six other guests on that reservation or possibly more, um, you could have an overnight car for each and every one of those people who are named on the resort. So if you're going as a, you know, as a group of adults and everybody you know, has cars or multiple people have cars, that's not an issue there. It's included in the uh, complimentary parking. Yeah. Just make sure you only have as many people on your reservation as are actually a technically allowed in your room you don't want to put 18 people right. in your room that's supposed to sleep five <laughs> yeah they, um, they they won't let you do that yeah. with the reservation system but <laughs> but it's also it's also a great way if you're just even if you just have friends that are going to come over to your resort and visit you in your room or whatever mm-hmm. to make sure make i mean yes you can always uh you know make some calls and make sure that the people know that these uh, guests are showing up there just for a few hours to visit your resort or whatever and they will allow them through there and you won't have to pay anything extra to park but it might be easier if you just have them on your reservation they're going to come over anyways and just pop them on your reservation just be sure they don't charge your car (laughs) your reservation (laughs) you don't want to come in this weird bill at the end of the day true true (laughs) that's a good point but anyway so that's That's like i said it's like a fyi michelle's tip always the best tip (laughs) what about you my sweet my tip this week and we were just talking about genie plus a little bit and i just wanted to mention to you that you know remember if you have genie plus attached to your ticket for the day or the whole trip or whatever and you have the park hopper ticket or you're an annual pass holder that has the park hopper Mm -hmm. option obviously important to it um you know when you make your lightning lane reservations you don't need to restrict it to the park you begin your day in if you have that park hopper option you can look at making reservations for Mm -hmm. lightning lanes in other parks so you know, if you are starting the day, say, at Magic Kingdom, but you want to head over to Animal Kingdom mm-hmm. later or Epcot later or whatever, you can start looking throughout the day at what might be available when you get to these parks. Now, mm-hmm. the one thing you want to remember with this is that you can't pee at those parks uh, when you're park hopping before a certain time. Right. And sometimes there, you know, there could be limited capacity. It's very rare that the parks close because of capacity. Right. But keep that in mind, especially during the busy times as well. But uh, you'll want to make sure that your lightning lane reservations that you make for a park that you don't have the original reservation for are after that park opens up for park hoppers. So that Walt Disney World, uh, all those parks will be after 2 p.m. Right. At Disneyland, it will be after 1 p.m. Uh, also, another great thing that you can do this for is if you're going to use your Genie Plus, 
and you're trying to figure out what park you want to go to. Maybe you know or you think you know, but you're not quite sure. Right. You might want to take a look at that and see what lightning lanes are available for attractions you might want to go in. And maybe you're thinking, point. hey, I want, I'm going to go to, I want to go to Magic Kingdom, but you look and there's just not a gr- great selection of lightning lane options. Right. But you look over at Hollywood Studios or Animal Kingdom or whatever, mm-hmm. and you see like, oh, there's a bunch there. Maybe you, you know, you, so you, you get a little, you, know, you change your, your decision there. You don't have to make a reservation for which park you're park hopping to. Right. So you can go ahead and make your Lightning Lane reservation for that. And instead of your original plan to go to Magic Kingdom, you go to the studios right. or you go to Epcot or whatever it may be. So just a quick little tip on Genie Plus there. Very for good. Excellent, so, babe. Thank you, sweetheart. So that's it for this week. Next week, well, we're back with another edition of Creating Disney Magic. <laughs> yes, Michelle, more Michelle research. It's been a month already. It's always good stuff. <laughs> uh, this time, the focus will be on some of our favorite things within Disney Park. Parks. They create the magic. You know them. You love them. Disney cast members. Yes. Michelle. Yeah. So uh, like I, like you just said, it, they're the people who really create the magic for you. And so we want to definitely, you know, highlight them. Yeah. No, that'll be a lot of fun. Michelle will do a great job with it as she does with all these things. Fingers and, crossed. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, just to, we'll explore all the subtle and not so subtle ways those cast members go out of their way to make sure your day is just that much more magical. Yes. Yes. So uh, that's it for this week. We appreciate that you joined us today. In the future, you can find us most everywhere you get podcasts. However, the very best place to find us is on our own website, HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. And while you're there, please sign up for our newsletter. We don't share your email address with anyone. Nope. Just another way to be involved in the Hyperion Adventures podcast world. The email is only used to get that newsletter to you on a mostly weekly basis, usually on Tuesdays, sometimes Wednesdays, but usually on Tuesdays. Uh, Another great way to be involved with us is on social media. We're on Twitter at Hyperion Podcast, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. If you are on Facebook, come on over and join us for some good positive Disney energy fun at our Hyperion Adventurers Facebook group. Yeah, it's a a wonderful group of people and we really enjoy them and what they share. And if you're uh, haven't joined it like Tom said please join it or tell a friend if you already have joined it about this great group yep come on in and have some fun with the rest of us there also we do have a YouTube channel if you want to check us out there just do a quick search for Hyperion Adventures podcast hit subscribe you'll know whenever we have a new video and if you ever want to email us for any reason please hit us up at our Gmail account Hyperion Adventures podcast at gmail.com that's right we love hearing from you we love hearing from you even if it's just to say hi Uh, We just love the interaction in so many ways. So that's it. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Hyperion Adventures podcast. We look forward to sharing some time with you again next week. Until that time, I'm Tom. I'm Michelle. And we hope that you have a magical week. Bye.